Hi, everybody. This is Move Easy Yoga with Via, and today is November 23rd, 2021. We're going to start in the ordinary fashion, uh, or my ordinary fashion, uh, static rest. This is a pose um, uh, that will help you bring your entire body, mind, and spirit into the room. You're going to be supine. Your knees are going to be bent and uh, up on a chair. Look at Kathy for the position. You may want to put some towels under your head. This is a great way to stop thinking and start paying attention to your breath. I'm going to time for seven minutes. While you're here, just pay attention to your breath. Notice Kathy has her arms up in a cactus pose, which is a really nice chest opener. But if that's not available to you, you can put your arms down by your, by your hips. Pay attention to your breath. When you start to lose your attention to breath, just gently bring yourself back.
stay right here. And just slowly move your head right and left about six times, just looking right and looking left. And then come back to center for vagus nerve reset. So this is a um, this is a movement, a very simple movement because you're not moving anything but your eyeballs, uh, and it's going to reset the vagus nerve from fight and flight to rest and restore. Just looking, uh, staying where you are. Your head could be on a pillow or a sponge ball or a set of therapy balls or a stack of washcloths. You're just going to look with your eyeballs, nothing else moves, look to the right and wait for an involuntary sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. If you're new at this, uh, it may take a while. I mean, as in repeated efforts. <laughs> so don't um, be alarmed if you don't find one of those things now. Come back to center. Look, eyeballs moving to the left. And wait for an involuntary sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Come back to center. Do this two more times, two more sets, right, left, right, left, at your own pace, waiting each time for a sigh, swallow, yawn, or go. Finish up, stay here. And now we're going to do head ramping. Again, you can, you can just have your head on a pillow or a block, yoga block, or a set of therapy balls or a sponge ball, your choice. You can keep your, you can still keep your knees up on the chair for now or not, it's not a, not a, obviously not a requirement. You could do this supine with your knees bent, feet on the floor as well. The head wrapping means that you're gonna, you're the balls or you're gonna pay attention to your occipital ridge. You could bring your hands back behind your head as well and to hold the head in place. Whatever you do, press your occipital ridge into the floor. The chin drops, but it doesn't initiate the move. The occipital ridge and the back of the skull slide away from the shoulders. You hold the position and then release. So head ramping. Let's do this about five more times at your pace. This provides traction for the cervical spine and also helps counteract all of the rounding forward 
to look at phones and computers and books that we do in our daily life. The occipital ridge presses backward toward the floor. The chin drops. The skull slides away from the shoulders. And you hold that for a couple minutes, a couple seconds, not minutes, a couple breaths. Two more. And whenever you're ready, come out of this, push your chair away or push away from the chair and come up into a floor seated position. Um, Kathy, can you demonstrate a couple of floor seated options? Martha probably already knows these, but um, you, know, you can be cross-legged be in with your knees bent. You can be in a Z position. And there is the stacked knee position. <laughs> like that one. So any of these positions and in order to arrive there, you may want to be up on a blanket or a bolster or use some of your props. To, to get there. Kathy's in a four seated position that is called, well, I guess, cross-legged, <laughs> cross the cross-legged position. <laughs> um, let's start with a cervical side bend. So you're gonna sit up tall from your floor seated position and drop your right ear to your right shoulder. And I'm gonna time, where's my timer? You get a little bonus on this, this one. Go ahead and drop your chin towards your armpit. So just feeling a slightly different side band stretch on the back of the neck. Sitting up tall with the shoulders right above the hips and the hips even on the floor. And then come back, chin first and then the head up. Left side, left ear to left shoulder. Watching your breath, so always being aware of your breath and your movement. Drop your chin towards your armpit. and chin up and head up. Let's do this with resistance. This is a whole different stretch. Uh, cervical side bend with resistance. Drop your right ear, ear to your right shoulder. Put your right hand on your left ear <laughs> and press up into the hand. So this is, you should feel this in a totally different stretch along the neck. Pressing up, resisting, 
creating resistance between the hand and the head. And then take your hand off for just a second and drop your chin towards your, um, your chest and then put your hand back and create some more resistance between the head and the hand. You should feel the stretch a little differently. As you might have noticed already, we're focusing on neck and shoulders today. Release your hand, bring your chin up, and then bring your head up. Other side, left ear to left shoulder, put your left hand on your right ear and press up into the hand, creating some tension or resistance there. Sit tall. Now go ahead and lift your hands and then drop your chin. Now put your hand back and create some more resistance. This is a cervical side bend with, with resistance. Lift your hand, lift, bring your chin up, and then bring your head up. You can wiggle your head and see how that feels. See if you have loosened up your neck or shoulders yet. Now we're gonna do the, um, just the two basic movements that I always like to do in almost every class. And Kathy does, I think in her classes also. Uh, cervical, um, not cervical, thoracic side bend and then thoracic spine twist. So switch the direction of your legs or switch into another four seated position, your choice. And then take your right hand out along the floor and your left arm up and over. And keep your hips on the floor so that the, the, the bend is at the thoracic spine. Should be like a big C. Now drop your elbow, the top arm, a little forward to get a, an additional stretch in the latissimus dorsi. Bring your entire torso up and switch sides. Left arm up, left arm out along the mat, right arm up and over. Bring your elbow forward, your top elbow forward for a new stretch at the back of the armpit. and then come on up. Elbow first, and then the torso. 
Now we're going to do a seated side bend. You can switch the, rec the directions of your leg, legs again. Seated spine twist, not side bend. Put your left hand on your right knee. Take your right arm behind you, spider fingers, and rotate the thoracic spine to the right. Sit up tall. and breathe. You can move your head from looking straight ahead to looking back at your shoulder. You can keep it either of those locations or you can move between those two points. And come on back, slowly unravel and unwind yourself and start on the other side, right, right hand on your left knee, left arm behind you, spider fingers on the floor. Rotate your spine to the left. Sit tall, maintain the rotation, and then you can move your head between those two points, forward looking over your chest, or over your left shoulder, or choose one point or move between those two points. And come on back. Come on back and get your, uh, your neural balls or whatever you have. <laughs> Martha, even if you didn't come back to this, if you do come back to this class, I hope you'll get neural balls. Even if you don't, if you like sensory stimulation, which is uh, actually a new kind of a new um, concept in movement, um, you'll want to get these balls. <laughs> so I'm going to time. Um, we're going to do six points along the uh, hand. Oh, yes. We're going to do hand. We're not going to do foot, feet today. We'll do hands. Um, you can put your hand, your therapy balls. We do both hands at the same time. You can put the therapy balls on a brick or at the, your side or in front of you. Choose your own place. And starting with num position number one, which is at the top, just to at the metatarsal mound in the middle um, while time. Sit tall, try not to, try not to, um, Shrug your shoulders up. Try to keep them relaxed. So the neural balls have these little prickly points that are scientifically uh, designed to wake up the nerve endings in the bottom of the hands and the feet and other places in the body, I suppose, but I use them for mostly hands and feet. Help with circulation, lymph, lymph activity. Go to the second point, which is smack dab in the middle. So when I'm when I'm doing this work with the therapy balls, even the either the feet or the hands, I often get a release in my neck and shoulders. If you're not working with the neural balls, you're still getting um, myofascial release. You're not getting sensory stimulation so much, but you are getting uh, fascial release, which is a, also a good thing. So 
Position number three is just below position number two at the base of the palm. Position number uh, four is the outside edge of the hand. You'll find a place, if you're new at this, it, it might be actually a place that is very foreign um, and maybe a little slightly painful. Outside edge of the hand. Find your own spot. So Noboso is coming out with new products right and left. They have a toast spreader that I really like. Better than any toast spreader I've ever met. <laughs> and now they have socks with, um, I guess, spiky bottoms. Next position is the inside edge of the hand. It's really of the webbing between the uh, forefinger and the thumb. But again, this may be this may be um, say very sensitive to you if you're just just starting to do this release work. So Diana, Leslie, and Catherine will be back next week. And they all say hello. <laughs> last one. The last piece is at, at the base, uh, at the thumb pad. Which, by the way, is also a, a, um, a pressure point for pain release. So if you're, while you're doing this, you may... If you have any pain, you may release it. And that's the end of the six point hand release series with neural balls. You can shake out your hands and find your way onto the floor, side lying with a block under your head. We're gonna do some shoulder work. We're gonna do the shoulder series, the side line shoulder series. Lying on your side with a brick under your head or a sponge ball. And starting with position number one, scapula retraction and protraction. So bring your hand out. So stack your knees, stack your ankles, stack your hips, stack your shoulders. Bring your top arm out in front of you. And then with a scap, moving the scapula away from the spine, the arm as a result of that movement goes forward but it does not initiate and then come back. It's called retraction. When you come forward, protraction, this is a scapular movement. 
if you're not used to it, a lot of people are not used to moving their scapula. They don't even know they have a scapula. And do, do uh, three more times. Forward is a pulling away protraction scapula and retraction of scapula. Moving slowly so that we can retrain the brain to move in a functional way, to move this, this uh, joint, this bone, this scapula in a functional way. And then go ahead and just rest um, your arm along the side your hip for a minute. And then the next movement, this we're going to do it in triplets, is bringing your arm up to the ceiling and then back down parallel to the floor. This is a lateral abduction, adduction. This is more of an arm bone movement than a scapula movement, although the scapula may be a little bit involved. One more. Go ahead and put your arm on your hip and rest. The next movement is internal and external rotation of the head of the arm bone, the head of the humerus. Bring your arm up toward the ceiling. You can put your other hand, the bottom hand, on your uh, on that joint, uh, so you can feel this and make a small soft fist, so that you're not going to use your fist, because the idea is to move where the arm bone sits in the glenohumeral joint. Don't move the elbow. Don't move, don't make this movement at the elbow or the wrist. You're going to move inward toward or toward the front and then towards the back, and toward the front, and toward the back. Four more times. Slowly feel the, the activity, feel the movement with your other hand. And one more. That's the first, go ahead and put your hand down on your hip. That's the first triplet, one, two, three. Now we're gonna do one, two, three more movements. The first movement is called technical snow angels. Starting with your hand on your hip and then externally rotate so that the palm is up toward the ceiling and then bring your arm up, up, up over you by your ear as far as you, as close as you can get to your ear. When you've reached your destination, um, change the face of the palm to face forward and then come on back. So it's two slightly different locations of the head of the arm bone. Palm up, come all the way up. This is an overhead arm movement. And number three, four, five. And six, last one. So slower is better in this practice. Rest for a minute. We're gonna do shoulder circles in both directions while in one direction and then in the other. So just bring your arm behind you and then up 
by your ear and then forward and back to the hip. Come on, keep going. Number two, circle number two. Don't move your torso. This is just the head of the arm bone moving in all of its various possibilities in the glenohumeral joint. Number four. If you come into pain, make your circle smaller. Five. If you continue to come into pain after you've made, made your circle smaller, make stop altogether. Reverse your circle. Okay, rest. The next thing we're gonna do is called flying pizza. It's really good for um, strengthening the rotator cuff muscles. Bring your arm, bend your elbow, keep your elbow tucked into your waist. And then as you move your arm out, up toward the ceiling, rotate the forearm and the wrist, and then bring it back. So facing down at first and then rotating and facing your ear. And keep the elbow tucked into the waist and come up and back as far as you can. You'll feel this in the upper back and just around the scapula. Okay, finish up. And when you're finished, flip to the other side. So Martha, one of the reasons I do a lot of supine and floor work is to is to is so I'm not loading. So I'm not loading the um, the spine. We, st we still do some standing, some other work, but um, I think it's um, we, I think it's good to do movement that doesn't load the spine, even though though you also need to load the spine. But we, God knows that we load the spine all the time when we're seated or standing in our, our daily lives. Let's go ahead and start on the other side. Scapular protraction retraction. So remember, this is a scapular movement. Think of the protraction as um, pulling the scapula away from the spine and the retraction as coming back towards the spine. Go ahead and finish up. One more, two more, depending on your pace. And then rest. Number two, lateral abduction, adduction. Just bring your arm up toward the ceiling, starting, starting in front of you and then up toward the ceiling and then back down. Opening up.
finish up. And rest. The last one in this triplet is internal and external rotation of the femur and the lunar humeral joint. You can put your um, bottom hand, the fingers on that joint so you can feel this. Make a little fist with your wrist if, if that's comfortable for you. And then internally rotating the, the head of the arm bone, the femur, and then externally rotating it. So rotating it forward. And all of the activity happens at the glenohumeral joint. And finish up. And rest. Okay, the second triplet starts out with technical snow angels. And you're gonna externally rotate uh, here so the palm is facing the ceiling. And then bring your arm up and over by your ear. By the time you get to the other side, the palm's facing the floor, right? Then when you reach that destination, make, make have the palm face face the front forward, and then bring your arm back. Externally rotate, palm faces ceiling, all the way up as high as you can get it by your ear. Palm forward, and come on back. Palm to ceiling. Palm forward. Two more exactly like that. Rest. Circles, shoulder circles. Bring your arm behind you. And all the way around. Did we do both directions last time? Yes. Oh, good. That was it. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. This is one of my favorite movements, sideline. It only works well, sideline. I mean, you could can do shoulder circles, uh, standing up, but this is the best. It's also the best for my tight shoulder on that side. Yeah, it is. Reverse your circle. I broke my arm recently, as you all, most of you know, and Martha knows now, broke my, the head of my femur. And this circle was very limited. My range of motion here was very limited at first, but it's getting much better. Good. Yeah, my circle was very small. Finish that up, rest for just a second. So the slower you go, in some ways, the harder it gets. It's more work to focus like that with breath and movement. Bend your elbow, palm 
forearm parallel to the floor, palm down. Now you bring your hand up and as you bring it up, you rotate the forearm so that the palm is facing the ear. And then come on down and do it again. See if you can feel the movement, the activity, the, the strength building that is happening in the back of the um, scapula. If you can't, try to be make sure that you're stacked, everything's stacked. Shoulders, hips. Okay, so we've done those. Let's come, let's see what I can do here. We're running out of time actually. Um, what I'd like you to do is come up to, to seated. We're gonna just do some shoulder shrugs. Seated, four seated position. Sitting tall, shrug both shoulders up into the ears as strongly as you can and hold and then release, just release quickly and do this again. And release. Um, let's do four more times. One more. Let's do this before we go to the floor for yoga nidra. Um, this is a tongue, the use of the tongue against the teeth um, to release the neck and jaw and help with double chin, by the way. So, and this is something you could be doing almost any time and anywhere, nobody knows, as long as you're not talking. <laughs> so um, what I want you to do is place your tongue, uh, the tip of your tongue at where the, at the top of the teeth in the front, where the, where, where the um, what's that called, the palate, at, right at the palate, so close your mouth. And I'm gonna time for 10 seconds. Um, and then you're gonna release for 10 seconds. So hold this position for 10, and if you want to, one of the more interesting things you can do is touch the bottom of your chin and feel the, the muscle work. Now stop, rest. So it's, when you do this, it's important to rest for 10 seconds. Press for 10 seconds, tongue press. For, there's another position too. So, but let's do it again. Press the tongue at the seam, at the seam where the teeth and the palate meet. And rest for 10 seconds. We're gonna do another position. And that is roll your tongue, curl your tongue and put it at the top of the palate where there's a ridge actually, it's a little farther in, you can feel the ridge and there's a cha change in the shape of the palate. Put your tongue there, 10 seconds. Rest for 10 seconds. Oh, 
Oops, I forgot to start. I forgot to count that. So stop there and do it again. Curl the tongue. Put it up at the on the palate where there's a, a ridge, a change in shape. Okay, stop that and come on to your back for yoga nidra. If you'd like to, you can put your legs back up on a chair. Otherwise you can have your knees bent or straight, legs straight. The idea is to be comfortable. You may want to put a washcloth over your eyes or a blanket over your body. I'm going to stop my video so I can don't have to watch myself reading the script. I'm going to start. Kathy, did you were you going to say something? Uh -uh. No. Okay. I was waving. You were waving. Okay. Oh. We're going to start by paying attention to the breath. I'm going to lead you through 61 points. This is yoga nidra. You're not going to move. Or you're just going to move your attention. So don't move anything. Just pay attention to the point that I've mentioned. Starting with the breath, breathing in and out and observing your abdomen as it rises and falls. Now bring your awareness and your attention to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes the 61 point guided meditation, yoga nidra. Go ahead and start to wiggle, extend your legs and bring your arms overhead by your ears, extend uh, your arms and, and your legs in opposite directions and try to create a little more space between the pelvis and the, and the rib cage. Wiggle and stretch, right side, left side, both sides. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Circle your ankles and your wrists in one direction and then the other. And then on your right knee to your chest. 
and your left knee to your chest. Hug both knees to your chest and rock from side to side and release the lower back. Whenever you're ready, roll towards the camera, <laughs> roll towards the class in front of the room <laughs> and use your bottom arm as a pillow. Stay here for just a minute to thank your, yourself for bringing yourself to your yoga class and thank yourselves for coming to and moving and your, your cells are probably thanking you to bring yourself up to seated. I'm going to remove the spotlight. I'm going to turn on my camera. I'm going to change my view to gallery. You can change yours to gallery too, so you get to see everybody. And then put your hands into prayer pose. We're going to close the class with this. Go ahead and press your palms together very strongly. See if you can find your scapula when you press your hands together. And then soften your prayer pose. And lift your, um, your skull, your occipital ridge away, up and away, so that you can drop it forward over your cervical spine, the top of the cervical spine, not bowing and nodding. And knowing that we, each of us is a light and all of us is one light. All of us are one light. We'll close the class by saying to each other, namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. I am going to pause, stop the recording.